Welcome to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. We coach people every day on their money and how to plan for the future. As financial advisors, we're here to have an honest conversation and educate you on how to money. Intentionally and passionately to hit your money goals. And we'll throw in some sports talk along the way. Our mission and goal of this podcast is to improve your money journey and help you create the financial life you deserve. So let's talk money. And sports. All right. Welcome back to How to Money with Cole and Cole. Bailey here again. Special day. How you guys doing? Can't complain. Yeah, doing all right. The weather's uh, starting to get a little cooler and uh, football's about ready to start. Yeah. No complaints. Everybody's my favorite time of the year. That's That's nothing better than than, uh, golfing on a, you know, a chilled, you know, fall morning and then watching college football Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Or Um, or Cole doing back to back football practices tonight with the mm. little ones. Yeah, I'm coaching my five year old's team and my eight year old's team. And we're doing, I just, you know, bless your heart. Rip the band aid off. I just do them on the same night. You do. I'm already there. You do a great job. Oh, well, thank you, Bailey. You really do. We're in full swing, though. You know what? We got. You know, in the office, we got uh, delivering a preschool. Preschoolers going on our first day of kindergarten. No, it was been oh it's gosh. been a big, uh, big Fall week. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spe- yeah. So college football, Iowa State game coming up. Oh boy, what do you guys got? Where's it at? Is it in Iowa City? It's bad. <laughs> it's it bad. I haven't looked at is it, it. Is it in Iowa City? Iowa I think it's Iowa City. It is yeah. Iowa City. It is. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's not a good track record. I, I, you know, uh, you think of our local teams, Nebraska and Iowa State. Their their win records are the coaches versus uh, Kirk Ferentz. It's it's like one it's win, like, yeah, or something yeah. crazy, like no wins maybe in like three, uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, ten seasons or something. So the odds are against probably the Cyclones uh, again. But uh, um, I gotta go just because there's some maybe some Gallery boys. I'm gonna go with the Hawkeyes, even though I I kind of grew up more of a Cyclone fan. But I'm gonna go with the Hawkeyes just because of the. There's going to be a gallery, uh, local gallery boy presence uh, on the field uh, for that game. So I got to go with the Hawkeyes. Nice, nice. What are you going with, Bailey? Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes all the way. No like, brainer. Is that your brain or your heart telling Both. you that? Both. And I need it because if they lose, my husband's disaster <laughs> all day in the house. <laughs> Hawkeyes. Go I'm Hawks. taking the upset. I'm taking Iowa State. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming Iowa will be favored. Um, and I have no real reason except Matt Campbell. I just think he's one of the best coaches in, in America, and I think Iowa State's just going to get it done this year. I don't yeah. know why. Cole P., you got my back on that one. All right. So, All right. There will actually be three local local yeah. kids because there's uh, uh, Tyler Fisher, a kid from uh, – or um, Tyler Miller from Jefferson. He's starting a left tackle for Iowa State as of now. Oh, really? an injury. Okay. And then sounds like uh, Aaron Graves is going to – He's going to be in the mix at D line, and then uh, Kyler Fisher as well from from Gallery is uh, in the two deep at, at I think uh, outside linebacker for, That's for awesome. the Hawkeyes. So so a lot of uh, local presence, which is pretty exciting awesome. for yeah uh, for people who know a lot of those families. So. That's yeah. cool. We got a uh, a big golf outing on Thursday, too. Yep. The Growth Alliance golf outing. I get to watch them golf this time because right. this is like a, like I said, it's the Growth Alliance golf outing. And so Spin Are Market you? will be on T5 with our tent so that's I'll our first tee yeah yeah that's, really that's awesome yeah. so i'll get to watch your like oh that was my warm-up shot hit <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. we'll be good warmed up by then yeah, but yeah, yeah. uh so the teams are the winning team dum, dum, dum. The, the teams are myself cole peterson my wife molly nelson bailey ashbrook lefty larue and tom nelson <laughs> molly's dad uh against cole jasky uh jeff kraus who yep. is cole's father. father-in-law Emily Q, who was in the off in our office, uh, assistant, and uh, Kirsten Mason. So K-O. it's it's a big showdown. Every team has one fairly good golfer. Uh, Cole's better than me, I know. Um, but and then everyone has two women. And I'm a stronger female. No offense, Kirsten. <laughs> like, I just have to pause for one second. Did I just hear Cole Peterson admit that Cole Jasky is better than him at golf? It depends on the day. I, I've, you know? I've always said that. Yeah. I've always oh. said that. His handicap's lower. Okay. That's and what then, the handicap's there Then for. each team has one guy that can hit from the senior tees. Yeah, it'll be fun, and it's great. It's a great local event. A lot of people come out. I love my father-in-law, and hopefully, I don't know if he listens to this or not, but, you know, he's he's pumped about playing, but he's asked me, like, yesterday, he texted me, he's like, hey, do you know who we're playing with? And then, uh, you know, as far as the other team, and then he's like, 
he's like, God, I, I hope you don't care about winning. Like, you know, he's like, I, I'm just, you know, I played once this year. So he's all worried about checking. I'm like, Jeff, we're you're like, I one. don't care. And yeah, then yeah, secretly like, you're like, yes, I yeah. really care. Like, if yes, we win. I, I want to win, you know, but, but I'm like, you know, I'm just looking forward to the day with him. I'm, I'm trying to get him. He used to play a lot of golf. So I'm trying to get him back, uh, back yeah. playing again. So, so it's just funny to see him, you know, he's, he's thinking about it. And so we'll, we'll have a report back on the next podcast on the, on the office champ. Yeah. We'll yeah. win. Um, it's a no-brainer. All right. And then we got NFL coming up, too. Yeah. Yeah, that starts. Uh, so this podcast will come out on September 6th, and the NFL season starts September 8th. Yeah. So yep. this will come out on Tuesday. NFL season opens September 8th with the Rams and the – can't remember who the Uh-oh. second team is, but I know the Rams play. Chiefs, maybe? Um, no. Thursday night. Chiefs. Yeah, it's oh. Thursday night game. But, uh, yeah, and I got my f- big uh, fantasy football yeah. draft the night of the 6th, too. So I'll be listening to the podcast on I got the way one down on the to se- I got one on the 7th, so that's yeah. the one and only that I'm, I'm doing. So. Yeah, I'm only doing one also. I love how you guys say that with pride. Like, I'm only doing one. It doesn't matter because you're so serious all season. Like, <laughs> God, I'm not well, it gets, it gets it. complex, you know. It, it's, there's a lot of movement. You get different leagues, different rules. So you kind of just narrow it down. four, and, so yeah. being so. one is... Kind of gets Different. to be too much, you know, and it's a pride thing too. You know, you want to win. It's with your, with your boys or your, your good buddies. Normally, normally there's something for losing or the worst person, but uh, yeah. well, have, the, uh, have the Steelers picked a starting quarterback yet? Um, I don't think so. It sounds like Trubisky is going to be the, the okay. starting quarterback though. The Panthers kind of picked a no brainer move. Baker. 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 Yeah. yeah. But all right. Hey, the, hey, uh, Russell Wilson's going to start for the Broncos. Yeah. Yeah. We Whoa. Know. No. Well, hey, tra- you know, transitioning here, you know, we're talking the sports talk here. Yeah. So, you know, we always, uh, this is a great analogy. Um, you know, I'm obviously no great, uh, great idea or storyteller here, but I stole this analogy from him. But, you know, your personal finance is very, very relatable to owning a professional football team, right? You own your finances, but, you know, you hire the general manager, uh, the football coaches, the assistants. And, you know, that's what, uh, what we're doing here today. We got another, you know, professional that we think is a part of that team or that organization of your personal finances. And, um, the CPA is obviously makes a big, uh, you know, or your CPA tax prof- professional makes a, a big piece of that. So, uh, and that's what, you know, we got a, we got a guest today on, uh, to go a little bit more in detail and hopefully bring some value, value to your personal finance situation. Yeah, definitely. We were going to have Craig Gerard. He's going to be at a later time. So now we have a more special guest today. Ooh, more special. Neil Flattery, a CPA at Trevino and Associates. So we're going to let him speak on everything and talk about everyone's favorite subject, taxes. Yeah. I love taxes. It's two certain things in life. What are they? Taxes and taxes. Texas and Texas. All right. Well, we're going to take a, take a quick break. When we come back, uh, uh, Neil will be on with us. Awesome. This podcast is produced by Spin Market and Digital. Located in Fort Dodge, Iowa, Spin Market's highly skilled team can help you increase your market by updating your website, improving SEO, designing advertisements, and producing podcasts that will grab the attention of your market. Contact Spin Market today for all your digital marketing needs at digital agent at spinmarket with two K's.com or call us at 515-302-8026. And to learn more, visit our website at www.spinmarket with two K's.com. That's digital agent at spinmarket.com or 515-302-8026 or visit our website www.spinmarketwith2ks.com All right. Well, welcome back. Uh, we have Neil Flattery here from Trevino and Associates. Um, thanks for being here, Neil. And we appreciate you uh, coming on as being one of the, uh, would you consider him the assistant coach then? Who's the head coach? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's uh the general manager is the financial advisor, right? Yeah, I would I would call us the GM. We kind of you know delegate quite a bit and right. uh, you know try to play connector a lot. I feel like you know I feel like we're not always leading the conversation, but a lot of times we'll lead those conversations and 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 really nudge clients to go down the the direction they need to go. And um, but yeah, I we're think more I, like the general manager slash head coach, and then we hire the assistant. Yeah, I'm fine with being the assistant. Too. You want to so think maybe accountants kind of. St- you know, they benefit more from being down in the, the wings, doing the dirty work. So I think that works well with what we do. Nice, nice. Yeah, so, Neil, a little bit about yourself. Um, I know you, you graduated from Iowa. Uh, you moved to Fort Dodge back in 2019. 
Um, you've got a wife and some kids. So tell us a little bit about uh, your journey back here to Fort Dodge. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm born and raised in Fort Dodge. So if, same with my wife. So I think it was kind of one of those things where we were looking, you know, when we got married, maybe for the right opportunity to come back. And I think once we, once Brooke got pregnant with our first uh, child um, and then she got a job with the city, we kind of thought it was a good time to, to maybe come back and, and settle on it. I think what we found is it, it's been the right move for our family too. being back in town. I think it makes a lot of sense if, you know, we have both parents in town, you know, Brooks got both set of grandparents still alive. Um, you know, there's actually five generations on Brooks side that are still in Fort Dodge, which is wow. pretty incredible huh. too. Yeah, that's so, awesome. What's her maiden name? Uh, Axness. Axness. Yeah, okay. so there's a lot of Axnesses too. And I think people are surprised to hear that like, you know, there's a lot of flatteries are in the area too, but there's probably just as many Axnesses too. Really? Yeah. yeah I, was oh, like, I, I don't, don't know, know about that. <laughs> <laughs> flatteries if you don't know i, I think you know, well, the, the flattery name is also you know yeah. tied to athletics i right, think you know so, right. so you hear you know, more frequently yeah, yeah. just just from you know obviously not just for athletics maybe but, not just axnesses but yeah. just as far as her extended family yeah, right. yep. in the area too so it's kind of nice to to have a bunch of family in town i think you had mentioned too earlier cole like it seems like there's a lot of young families in town right. too and there's a lot of young kids too so it's it's going to be a good uh, community to have our kids grow up into. I think I'm I think pretty excited about that. A lot of, a lot of positive momentum, I think, and good, good young professionals coming back. A lot of professionals, you know, and, and business owners, people that are, uh, you know, uh, starting families, already have families. And we were just talking how big the, the current kindergarten class is for the public school district. And I think that's a, you know, a positive indicator, you know, where, where the trajectory of the community is going. So right. tell, tell us a little bit about your, you know, your, your professional background, a little bit, how you kind of got, got yeah. to, you know, or I guess your storyline, you kind of told us personally how you and your wife got back to here, but talk a little bit that, about that. Yeah. So, um, I went to the university of Iowa and I think, um, majored in accounting. Um, and at the university of Iowa, they kind of push you, um, when you're there, they have a lot of relationships with like the big four accounting firms. So that's, um, KPMG, Ernst and Young, um, I'm forgetting a couple Deloitte and I can't remember the fourth, but, um, and so a lot of the people will go that route so right. and, and, um, you'll end up in a big city, um, most times. Um, but I, I kind of went a different path and I, I started working at a, like a, maybe a more local firm in Cedar Rapids, which they just have one office in Cedar Rapids. Um, but it was founded by partners who came from the big four. So I felt like it gave me a good opportunity to kind of um, work at a local firm where in doing that, you kind of get to have to have your, you know, you kind of get your feet wet in a lot of different areas of, yep. of uh, tax and accounting. Whereas maybe if you went to the big four route, maybe you're pigeonholed a little bit into working in audit specifically or a specific type of audit or a specific type of tax. Whereas, you know, I, I had the opportunity to work at that, that small firm in, in Cedar Rapids too, or, but it also had kind of the big four element because of the partner's, had that experience too. We had big clients too, but I also was, was doing a little bit of everything over there. And I felt like that set me up well to make the move back to Fort Dodge where, you know, we're a smaller community and, you know, as an accountant here and a CPA, you're kind of expected to um, know a little bit about, about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of a little bit of a jack of all trades and, and we, we understand that because we do a little bit of everything also. And, um, that's that's what you have to be in a small community because there's not those people that specialize necessarily with just certain type of taxes or certain type of financial advising. You got to be more uh, more broad ranged, I guess, is what I'm what I'm getting at. And it sounds like that's what you're you were looking for, and that's what you found here in Fort Dodge. So yeah, and I, I think it kind of makes your job maybe a little bit more exciting too. Where you know you know I know a lot of people say that oh my job I get to work every day and I. I never know what I'm going to run into, which I kind of think isn't always the case. You kind of know, kind of know what you're going to run into most times, but at least at a smaller firm, you're going to be dealing with a lot of different types of questions. Um, I know maybe you guys have talked in the past where you get legal questions and tax questions and stuff like that. And you got to kind of know when, Hey, I'm not an expert in this area. Um, I know it made me know a little bit to, to push you in the right direction, but you got to kind of know when, I need to defer to the financial advisor. I need to defer to the, the uh, lawyer or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And I think kind of realizing as you get, as you get into the profession, what you know and what you don't know is important. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem if you don't know the answer, you just need to 
be able right. to find the answer. Yep. Always, uh, always find another. the, always find, find the person that yep. does know the answer. Right. You know, exactly. that's, that's creating the team around, you You know, you can go and get an answer that's, that's valuable or, or, you know, it, that, that can, that can have weight in that, that specific area. And that's, I think we constantly are doing that. And it sounds like, you know, it's the same process for you as knowing, knowing where to defer and, and creating that, that network, you know, for you. And it's not only better for us, it's better for our clients that we serve, you know, on, on all, all aspects. Right, right. All right. Enough about Neil. Let's not talk about him anymore. Let's <laughs> I was talk about just taxes. Gonna say, because Neil, like you said, every day you kind of know what's going on, but there's always a lot of changes in taxes. Taxes are always, everyone's like, what's the up to date information? So there is a big change coming to the Iowa State tax law. Can you explain it and how it will impact people? Explain it. That's pretty broad. That's tough. Yeah. So oh, get yeah, your book. Yeah, yeah. Get your book out here. Right. Explain the changes. Yeah. yeah, and I know you guys have kind of touched on these these changes a little bit on your your prior episode. Has more weight when you say it though. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. Just, we, know, we just act like we know what we're talking about. Talk this is just coal and coal here. So I'm a big fan. So I've been listening. Um, I appreciate it. So you know, one of the major changes you had talked about, you know, on a previous podcast is starting in I think 2023. Yes, retirement income at all is not going to be taxable. Um, on which, state level. On the state level for Iowa, correct? Exactly. And so, you know, I think it's you know, maybe a little bit um, overstated in the sense that, you know, we already had it in Iowa where social security tax hasn't been, social security income hasn't been taxable in Iowa. And we've already had the, you know, the retirement exclusion, but now we're just bumping it up to all those different streams of income that are related to retirement are not taxable at all. So that's going to be a big benefit too. And I think I, I, I was reading a little bit about another provision too, for farmers specifically where, um, you know, maybe you can touch on this a little bit. I've seen it. I haven't mentioned it, but I, I yeah. was something I, I didn't know to bring. I didn't want to get too in detail, but it's something that brought, like, you know, I got a farm family. So go ahead and touch base I on it. I have no idea I, what I you two are talking about. So I'd like to hear it. It is interesting. Yeah. So. And it, it's, it's kind of the, the thought process behind it was, you know, a lot of farmers, um, you know, they don't have like a conventional 401k or an IRA that they're investing. I think maybe farmers would benefit a lot from, you know, getting more involved in those type of areas. But, you know, a lot of their income maybe is from, cash rent um, of their farmland or um, crop share income or whatever the case may be. And so, um, and I know a lot of the guidance around this is still coming out, but basically you'll have, you know, farmers will be able to elect to either um, um, not have, be able to exclude their cash rent income or crop share income from taxable income on Iowa, or not have the sale of their land um, or other pro, pro farm property be subject to capital gain tax. So you'll have those. At all? At all. Wow. Yeah, if you yep. were to sell it. And so it's basically putting in line, you know, farmers in line with the retirement provisions that are in place for all the other taxpayers. So, so you're telling me somebody's owned a farm for 40 years and they bought it for $1,000 an acre and they sell it for $15,000 an acre they do not have to pay any capital gains tax going forward. So on the state level, obviously on the federal level still, and oh, that's where the majority, on, right. yeah, on the I majority, started. you know, in that scenario, a majority of the, you know, the capital gain would be tied in the federal, federal, federal side anyways. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, it is that, the, it, I mean, and you would know more about it than I, but I read that of, of most, of, it, it's very relatable of in our area. Most of the farmers, right. They don't have foreign cases, mm -hmm. like you said, or, um, and their all their assets are tied into land or, right. so they're just going to say, hey, I'm just going to cash rent this land someday. You know, and, it, and they kind of treated the way, and again, that's the problem with all these new legislation, right? It's always like subject to, you know, some interpretation and things there. So I'm sur sure you're you're still focused on 2022 law right. right now. And, you know, you'll have to transition to that 2023 law. But um, I thought um, as that, you know, I, and again, I, I've read, you know, just enough to be dangerous, but I think that's going to be something that, you know, probably hasn't really, people don't know much about, but I, I think will be very, very relevant to a lot of clients we serve moving forward and maybe changes some of their transitioning plans um, to on how they transition, you know, farming or selling, selling farmland. Right. So mm -hmm. that's a, a nugget we haven't talked about that I, I think will be very intriguing with how that, you know, the interpretation comes down. Yeah. Uh, further yeah. And, and another thing too, um, you know, with the new tax law changes, one of the, you know, kind of provisions in the Iowa tax law for years that was kind of unique to Iowa was that you could deduct federal taxes on your Iowa return and so that's, that's going to be changing now where you're not going to get that same deduction going forward. And actually 2022 will be the last year you'll be able to deduct federal taxes. So one of the things we've been kind of talking about with, with some taxpayers is if, if you're in a position to, it might be a good year to try to prepay 2023 taxes in 2022 as well, because 
because one, they're getting rid of that deduction for on your Iowa return. So any, any federal taxes paid in 2023 aren't going to be deductible in Iowa. And, and even then, it's going to be at a lower rate too. So you could get that federal deduction in 2022 and it's, you know, against Iowa income, that's going to be taxed at a little bit higher rate than we will going forward too. So that's another right. th- kind of thing to think about too go, for a, this year. That's a good plug there for, yeah. for our uh, uh, tax professionals that uh, talk to your tax professional. Cause that's something that I haven't even heard of, you know, anyone talking about. So I think that's a, that's a great thing and something that, you know, exact reason why you need to have a good professional in your, your corner. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that either. And um, another another thing that's changing with the Iowa state taxes, uh, we are going from a, um, what's called a, like a graded scale um, yeah. based on how much income that you make down tax, to a flat right, rate. Yep. And that's going to be gradual over the next five years, I believe. I'll, yeah. let you, I'll let you say the details, but I just know the general. Um, but we're going from a graded to down to a flat fee, but it's going to be uh, gradual over a, a time period. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I know right now we're, you know, we're taxed at, there's I think like five or six marginal tax brackets in Iowa. The, the top rate being about eight and a half percent is, is income. And there's no distinction between capital gain or ordinary income. You know what I mean? Capital mm-hmm. gain is going to be taxed at the same rate as ordinary income, but going forward over the next five years, um, ending in 2026, it's going to be the top bracket. It's going to be down to three and a half percent. It's going to be a flat three and a half percent tax rate too. So, you know, obviously really, really good news for Iowa taxpayers too. So that's exciting as well. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had some people that, and I think I talked about this last time that, that were thinking of moving to a different state in retirement to pay less taxes. And now they may pay less taxes here than they would pay somewhere else. Um, as far as their retirement distributions not being taxed, and then we're going down to a three and a half percent flat tax rate, which are they, if, as long as they aren't working, they wouldn't pay any of those state taxes. So, um, it's, it's really good news for, uh, Iowa and Iowa communities. I think people will stick around more than moving to the Texas or the Florida and, and those, yeah. those places. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully we can kind of, kind of try and keep some of these people in the state too, with these lower, lower tax rates as well. I know one of the things that's exciting from my perspective as a tax professional is a lot of times last few years, especially, um, when the federal side would make tax law changes, Iowa would, wouldn't conform with those changes. So it always make it a little more complicated in our end where, you know, they'd have bonus depreciation limits for federal that wouldn't be the same on Iowa. And so they'd make all these changes and the Iowa would be different. And mm-hmm. so, but going forward, at least our understanding is that they're going to try to conform with all federal changes going forward too, as far as like, if you're a farmer section 179 limits and, and bonus depreciation limits, all that stuff unless it's stated differently, the um, rule will be, that's all going to be the same as federal. So that, that'll be kind of nice. Makes, makes it a little easier on your lives. Yeah, I'm sure. exactly. And exactly. to interpret, eight, you know, interpret two different things, you know, right, differently exactly. when it's, you know, the same asset or detail you're dealing with. So Let's, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And then I was thinking too, because there's another tax change that happened in 2020, and I know it's impacted our clients, the 10-year rule. Maybe go into that, Neil, and how it's impacted your clients as well. Yeah. I mean, I think, and you guys have touched on this before on prior episodes too. I mean, I think the the main thing is just these, a lot of taxpayers with inherited IRAs are going to be pushed in a little bit higher brackets. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the question comes in, in this, the 10 year rule, that's what we're talking about too. So if you have an inherited IRA and um, you guys being financial professionals, you, you maybe have more familiarity with this rule than even I do, but you're basically going to have, have to take all that money out within 10 years of of inheriting the IRA. And so the question comes as a tax professional, how can we kind of distribute that income in a way to, to limit our tax liability too? Cause my understanding is it's not like you got to take out an equal amount over 10 years. You can take out all of it at once. You can take out some of it each year. And so my thoughts are, and I know every taxpayer is going to be different, but depending on what your income situation is, is there a way that we can maybe fill up the 12% bracket each year and then maybe take out the, the rest of it in the year 10? Or can we fill up the 24% bracket? And so at least not all of it's going to be taxed at the highest marginal tax rate. Uh, yeah. I, I think so, it's so a... The, the rule is, uh, and, and the if, if the person that passed away was taking their requirement and distribution, you're going to be required to take out something out of the account 
every year. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty, this is this interpretation of of it. We're kind of continuing getting flyer, you know, or feedback on the interpretation of the rules. So it's kind of a hard thing. If you, if you're going through this now and trying to plan, I think there's probably still some things to come out and details to come out. So it makes it kind of tough at this point, but there are some that Cole was talking about. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. No, you're good. So, so yeah. So take, you know, say my father is 78 years old. So he's had to take his requirement of distribution since age 72. Um, he passes away. I inherit his IRA. So my mom's gone and, uh, both my parents are alive, by the way. I didn't try to kill them <laughs> off, but, um, uh, but say I inherit his IRA, um, just me solely. Let's just take my brother and sister out of it. Um, I am going to require to take some of it, some out every year for those first nine years. Now it's going to be smaller amounts. It's not going to be a 10th of the account. Uh, it's just your regular requirement of a distribution. But the big thing is in that year 10, they're required to take the rest of it. Um, so it, it, we do talk to people about it. We're also talking to clients that have large IRAs. That's the big thing too, is like, well, if you're not going to spend it and pay the taxes on it, do you really want your kids to pay the taxes on it? Uh, cause eventually somebody's going to pay the taxes on these yeah. IRAs. Um, so with the 10 year rule, um, it's, it's, Different, different for everyone, and I know we say this a lot, but um, you, if you have a large IRA or you have an IRA concern or inherited IRA or one of your parents has an IRA, something like that, um, if you have questions about it, let us let us know because it's something we can make a plan for. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Here, here's a question I have, I guess, and uh, you know we talked a little bit about this beforehand, but you know I'm always asking other professionals too. What what are what are some of the bigger, you know mistakes or issues that you seem to be dealing with, uh, you know, quite, quite frankly in, in more rele- relevance to the you know retirement planning or think more finance, you know, uh, personal finance situation, obviously businesses, you can go into all kinds of things, but think of the individual, you know, what's something that you see as a common misconception or, or mistake that's happening. Yeah. I think one of the things that taxpayers can run into is they, they don't want to pay any tax. And we, we have this discussion with everyone too. And it's, <laughs> You know, it makes sense, but there's a lot of situations too. And I'm thinking a lot with farmers too, where, you know, farmers have a lot of options as far as, you know, limiting their tax liability in the current year. You know, they could defer grain, they could take bonus depreciation on assets, they could prepay their inputs for the next year, whatever the case may be. And we try to encourage, you know, farmers or any taxpayer to like, um, not be afraid to pay a little tax. In, in the current year, because you run into the issues if you're deferring grain or whatever the case may be, is you may run into your, you're retired and then you can't defer grain anymore and you get hit that last year. And so, you know, one of the things with a, with a farmer too, say, you know, you end up, your farm makes $24,000 during the year, net profit. And that's subject to the standard deduction of $24,000 for a married couple. And maybe that's your only source of income for the year you will pay no income tax on that because it's subject to the $24,000 standard deduction, but you will pay a little bit of self-employment tax because your farm showed a profit self-employment tax being social security, Medicare tax. Yep. And that at worst, we'd think that'd be a good, that'd be a good place to be because you're paying a little bit into social security, Medicare. Um, you're not paying any income tax. I mean, if you, if you had the option, I, I would say even fill up the 10% bracket, fill up the 12% bracket. Those are really low marginal tax rates pay a little self-employment tax as well. And that's a good place to be as well. But you know, a lot of these taxpayers, they don't want to pay any tax. Mm. No one wants to write the check. No one wants to write the check. And it gets harder too when you, yeah, like you said, you actually have to physically write the check too, which makes it harder. But you know, if you can, if you can stay under that 12% bracket as well, that's a good spot. Better to pay a little at a time than to have that one year where you pay. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to get in a situation where you're, you're nearing retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, you're about ready to get done farming or whatever the case may be. You can't defer any more grain. You can't prepay any inputs because you're not farming the next year. Yep. And then you got to show all that, that income as, as income, basically. You don't always have to. You know, it's that, that the end of the year and got to buy a piece of equipment and take bonus depreciation or something on it just rather than writing, you know, some, uh, you know, uh, a little bit higher tax bill and then saving some of that cash, yeah. you know, you just buy the asset, depreciate it, just eliminate, you know, you see that all the time. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, a uh, you know, psychology to a little bit of that, uh, you know, physically writing the yeah. check over for people, unfortunately. And so. especially the standard deduction. I mean, they're given the, the government has given you that $24,000, 
or it's probably closer to $25,000 for 2022, you might as well take advantage of it too. You're just giving away a free deduction, basically, if you drive your income completely down to zero. Right. 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 So we're, we're getting a little tight on time. So I do want to ask this question because it really pertains to our job. What do you think is the most major change you see from working years to retirement years and in, in client situation with their taxes? I, I think one of the big things too, and you know, you guys probably deal with this a bunch is once you're nearing retirement, you basically have to make a conscious effort on how much income I, am I going to be taking out? How much is that is going to be subject to tax? Whereas when you're working, maybe you're a W-2 employee and they're taking out the taxes from your, your paycheck just on a biweekly basis or whatever. But once you're nearing retirement, you gotta you gotta sit down with a financial advisor and have that discussion of how much am I looking to um, how much do I need to live off of? How much of that income that I'm gonna be taking out is gonna be subject to tax? How much do I need to be withholding? All these different questions are are gonna pertain to you. Um, in Something the, that was basically done for you while you're doing your working years. Right. Um, basically, so your employers are are basically you know withholding your taxes for you, paying taxes on your behalf. Now you're retiring, and you're going to have to do that, or you're going to have to hire a financial professional to do that for yeah. you, essentially. Yeah. And then do the calculation too, right? That's the other thing is how much do I actually, you know, we're talking about the changes of the, you know, state tax, not in retirement income. You know, that's a, that's a different change year to year of what it looks like this year versus maybe years, years, years prior, the next few years. And who knows with different administrations, the tax laws are constantly changing too. So kind of hiring someone or, or getting in touch with someone who knowledgeable about those areas and how much I need to be withholding from my income and all those are, are really important questions. I don't think people necessarily, a lot of people aren't thinking about um, when they're nearing retirement. Yep. You know, how much of your social security is going to be taxable too? That's an important question as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We deal with those questions a lot. I mean, when we set people up with distributions out of their IRAs, you know, it's a common question. Well, do you know how much tax, I mean, that's what I ask people. Do you know how much, you know, what federal tax rate you want us to withhold? Um, most typical answer is no, uh, cause they don't know what, so, you know, what would you suggest? Well, we don't just pick a number out of the air, we look at how much income we think you're going to have. And we do, you know, what we think is right as far as, okay, do you want to prepay the tax or do you want to pay it all at tax time? Most people, again, want to prepay it. Um, And well, we think you're going to be approximately in the 15% federal tax bracket. So let's take 15%, something we can always adjust down the road. Um, But let's start there and then use that as a baseline. Yeah. And I think just the, like Neil, I can tell you're super intelligent. The stuff's always changing, but it's just the importance of working with people that are going to have you have a solid plan and planning ahead, being prepared and not waiting. Same thing we run into with our clients. The more you prepare, the more you plan. Not everyone loves having these conversations, but the more you have them and the more you plan ahead, the more successful you're going to be in retirement. So Neil, if you could give one advice for for your clients, what's the best piece of advice you can give them? You said only one more question for Neil. What? Yeah, but Neil's so smart, man. Look at him rolling. Well, you can't do that. That's like, okay, we got to run one more lap and practice. And then you, <laughs> well, I guess we got to go again. Yeah, yeah, but. I'm just joking, Neil. He's got okay. It. He's got if, it. if he's got a quick answer, we got to make it quick. Yeah, yeah I, I would say save early. Um, don't be afraid to pay a little bit of tax if you're in those lower tax brackets, too. Um, I wish I had a better answer for you too, but that's all I got. That's a very, uh, yeah. you know, tax guy. Tax yeah. Yeah. Answer. Save so, early. So no, nothing wrong with that. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Uh, awesome guys. Well, well, uh, thanks to all the listeners, uh, checking in for another week. Yep. Any, Make any, sure you find us on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. I'm on Twitter and central financial group.com is our website. Yeah. Yeah, you can find find Neil at Trevino and Associates. I'm sure that uh, they have. They, I know they've been on their website, so uh, you can find Neil there if you have some tax questions. But uh, other than that, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, thanks so much, Neil. Uh, plug for Neil. He's gonna be in Fort Dodge. Looks like a long time. So get your taxes done and pay them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks See you, everybody. It was fun. Go Cubs. Go Twins. You've been listening to How to Money with Cole and Cole, the podcast of Essential Financial Group, courtesy of Spin Market. Learn more about the Central Financial Group on their website, www.centralfinancialgroup.com. For now, I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. And we'll see you on the greens. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC, 
Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated. Material discussed is meant for general informational purposes only, and it is not to be construed as tax, legal, or investment advice. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Diversification does not insure against loss. Any guarantees discussed refer only to fixed insurance products and are backed by the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company.